I'm thrilled to welcome you to a new series by Thomson Reuters called Tech Connect. This series is meant to share various perspectives on cutting edge areas of technology, featuring different guests each episode. We'll dive into thought provoking discussions, offering a deeper understanding into the brave new world of technology and showcase where Thomson Reuters as a company plays a role. We hope you'll stay tuned with us as we try to ignite your imagination, challenge your perceptions and expand on the extraordinary possibilities that await us all. Welcome to Thomson Reuters Tech Connect. Hi everyone, welcome to our second episode of Thomson Reuters Tech Connect, bringing you diverse and dynamic perspectives from all corners of the technology world with thought provoking questions and conversation. Today, Mike and I will be chatting about the rise of generative AI and how it relates to the world of legal research. Hi, Mike. Hello, Carter. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Good. So, Carter, you know, we've seen a huge rise in generative AI, it seems to be everywhere these days. What is Thomson Reuters doing to ensure the privacy and data security of our customers' data uh, as they use this new technology with Thomson Reuters products? So generative AI has provided us the excitement of innovation I feel we needed in society. And generative AI tools really revolutionize content creation by automating generations of text, images, or even videos. You're starting to see many different sectors utilizing this generative AI technology from whether that be drug discovery and healthcare and marketing, providing more personalized content, or even redefining customer support channels through generative AI and improving customer efficiency or customer queries. Notwithstanding, this also emphasizes the importance of ensuring trust and responsible use of AI. So at Thomson Reuters, we expect all of our use cases utilizing any model, whether that be third party or custom built, to undergo a data impact assessment. This pulls in the privacy, the security, the data and AI governance, ethics as early stage detection. And that assessment will trigger specific ethics harms and risks that need to be addressed. Now, our team works with supporting the business functions also to help ensure that there's a clear path on mitigating those risks based on the severity of risks and the actions that need to be overcome. Um, we've also worked over the past few years closely with our technology business functions to create ethics tooling services that support these mitigation techniques. So generative AI has certainly been reshaping the way we approach work and we have had to and still will continuously uh, redefine the way we mitigate those action plans and risks early at the, the earliest stage possible. So um, I have a question for you, actually. From your perspective, how do you see this transformation affecting the future of professionals, especially as we continue to adopt tech into legal firms and departments? Yeah, that's a great question, Carter. Uh, you know, because I think generative AI is going to be pervasive across all of our customer workflows. We're going to see it everywhere. You know, it's hard to, to imagine a specific workflow that won't benefit from, from generative AI. Like where wouldn't you want to have an assistant sort of help you with your task and help you move faster and, and better? You know, so I think the, the biggest change that we'll see is that this is everywhere and it's saving customers an enormous amount of time, you know, helping them get to what they need much faster, much easier and get to, you know, the final work product that they're working on uh, much faster. I also think we'll see improvements in quality as well, because these technologies can surface insights not only faster, but uh, in a way that is often better than traditional approaches. And so uh, when the technology surface those insights, customers are going to produce better work product uh, than they have in the past. So Carter, let me um, ask you, you know, you talked about uh, data privacy and security, which uh, is really great to hear because in most of my customer conversations, that's a topic that comes up, something that customers are, are very concerned with. And I'm, I'm really glad that Thomson Reuters is taking it so seriously. But if we think beyond sort of the specific measures of data privacy and security, and just think about responsible AI generally, what is Thomson Reuters doing to promote uh, responsible AI? So I would say a few things on that front, and I really liked where you were going with 
on the technology advancements and the way our workflows as for our customers even will have to change and be improved. And the first thing I would say is not every project or use case needs generative AI or needs a large language model. And I would say two things. They're not treated equally and emphasize the importance that the source of the data that is feeding into that large language model. And we take attention at Thomson Reuters to all of it, uh, the data, the models, the moment they're created throughout their entire life cycle, all the way through to decommissioning that AI model. So there are model, what I like to call model agnostic control techniques. And these could be applied for every type of AI machine learning model. These are things like I was referencing that impact and, and risk assessments, but also model documentation, model monitoring, risk mitigation plans, data encryption, access controls, and even data minimization. These can apply to any sort of AI machine learning model. There's also a variety of specific approaches and controls, more of model specific controls and techniques that would be applied for the AI machine learning at hand. There's a few variables we look at um, in delineating those models themselves. And that would be, you know, the type of algorithms that were used, the types of data, the forms of that data, the AI model outputs and inputs, and ultimately what is the intended purpose of that AI machine learning model. All of those factors come in and this is where you start to see those model specific control techniques. And that could be things like de-identification of data, fairness in the form of bias detection and mitigation, explainability of the AI model, the technology you build and use and or create should be compliant with global regulation. Uh, but it also should be what I like to refer to as proactive governance, which really is considering embedding these controls, some of the ones that I just went over, based on your use case prior to regulation. So really acting in advance of regulation because we know regulation will continue to mature. On a related note, since we just launched a new Restla Precision, now integrated with Generative AI, let's talk about how we build it within our ethical AI framework and what has been the initial customer reaction so far. Yeah, thanks, Carter. We're, we're super excited about the new release of AI-assisted research in Westlaw Precision. So now customers can just ask a question the way that they're thinking about it or the way that they would talk with a colleague about it and then get back a much more um, analytical, a much more synthesized response than we've ever been able to uh, provide before. So typically a lawyer would go to Westlaw and ask a legal question and get back a long list of cases, statutes, regulations, secondary sources, briefs, trial documents, expert witness testimony, etc. And now with the use of generative AI, what we're doing is we're having the AI examine those cases, those statutes, those regulations, and bringing back a synthesized answer that sort of pulls it all together and provides a narrative response to that question. But importantly, it links to the supporting authority. So uh, they'll be able to see links to the cases, to the statutes, to the regulations, uh, so that they can understand with even more nuance what the primary law is saying and do additional research uh, to make sure that they've got everything they need uh, for their legal matter. So it's, it's a huge time savings. Uh, when we've tested it with customers, what practicing attorneys have said is, this is extraordinary. Like we've had uh, customers describe it as magic uh, because they know what it's like to have to manually sort of go through each of those cases, each of those statutes, each of those regulations and pull the answer together themselves. And we've had practitioners who specialize in particular areas test the system with questions where they know what the answer should be, they know the nuance of the answer, and they know the primary authority that should be supporting that answer. And then when they see the answer, they're like, wow, this would have taken me quite a while to pull all this together myself. So there's a lot of excitement uh, about this initial launch. We're very excited about it, uh, but it's just the beginning really. So. We're really excited that we're offering this capability where you can ask legal questions and get a, a great response back, which you know would sort of support research in an important way. It's like a, a big head start for research, and then we would expect customers to use the rest of Westlaw functionality or you know the, the other tools that we have in Westlaw to do further research. You know, 100% of the attorneys that we tested this with said that they would do additional research. Uh, when they get an answer back. And so we think that's important. We want them to understand the nuance. We want them to check. 
And when they're doing that additional research, we want them to be able to make use of this technology in those other places. And so in 2024, we're going to be bringing this technology throughout the research process. So not just as something to use at the beginning of research, but something that could be used all the way out, you know, all the way through the research process. So if you're looking at a key site result, you could use this technology to, you know, deeply examine and ask questions of the cases that are in that key site result. So there, there's so many places in the research workflow that we'll add this to. Uh, another example would be Quick Check. You know, today we have a, a tool called Quick Check that examines a brief or a motion and offers suggestions. Well, we'll be able to do that even better uh, with this technology. And so we're excited about what we've just launched, but we're really excited about the future as well. Awesome. You know what I really like about the examples you provided? And it's one of the core aspects of what is responsible and ethical AI. And that being with the advancements of generative AI tools, comes that excitement of innovation. Again, like what I think society in general, we all need it. What I really like is when we hear from our customers, like you were just describing, that role and responsibility of how they utilize that technology. Because technology is powerful, it's advanced, but the need to have human in the loop and the ethical considerations or the way of which you use it, the decision-making still is in the hands of um, that expertise and that professional utilizing the technology. And I think that's the most important takeaway, not to shy away from from the advancements of technology and use them to your advantage of how you in your operations as a customer could be more operationally efficient. Yeah, that's a great point, Carter. Uh, and we're very clear about that, not only in our training and in our discussions with customers, but also right in the interface. You know, we say that this technology should be used as part of a thorough research process, but it should not be used as a replacement for thorough research, uh, because there are times when you would, you would want to see a little bit more information and you know further research will uncover that information. So, and our customers get that, like they've all said, yes, of course, and uh, they expect to use it that way. So uh, it's really great. All right, everyone, thank you for joining this episode of uh, Tech Connect, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you at the next uh, episode. Thanks so much. Thank you.